A rough plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha, where tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. So there is our slope. Tan alpha is 3 over 4. We're then told that we have a particle of mass m placed on the plane, which is projected up a line of greatest slope of the plane. So here is our particle. It has a weight of mg, and the whole thing is moving up the slope. So the velocity is, at least initially, this way. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is mu. So friction will go in the opposite direction to motion. If it's moving up the slope, friction will oppose that. It will go down the slope. And whenever an object is moving, the frictional force is the max it can possibly be, which is mu r, where r is the normal reaction force. That is perpendicular to the slope. That is r. The particle moves up the plane with a constant deceleration of 4 over 5 g. So it's decelerating, it's slowing down. Acceleration will be in this direction with a magnitude of 4 over 5 g. And now let's resolve the weight force parallel and perpendicular to the slope. So this is the direction perpendicular to the slope. This is parallel. This is 90 degrees. This angle will end up being alpha. This will be mg cos alpha as it's the adjacent to the angle, and this here would be mg sine alpha, as it's the opposite. And the question is asking us to work out what mu is. Okay, so the acceleration is in this direction, it's down the slope, therefore the resultant force will be in that direction too. Perpendicular to the slope, we have the normal reaction force, we have the weight force going downwards, away from the slope, in that direction, those two forces will be equal and opposite. Perpendicular to the slope, we will have no resultant force, as the resultant force is parallel to the slope, in the same direction as acceleration. So perpendicular to the slope, there is no resultant force, and therefore R, the force in this direction, will equal to mg cos alpha, the force in this direction. So R is equal to mg cos alpha parallel to the slope. There is a resultant force. Again, that's in this direction here, down the slope. So we have two forces in that direction. We have the frictional force, mu r, and then we also have the component of weight, mg sine alpha, which is acting down the slope as well. So if we add those two things up, mu r plus mg sine alpha, this is the resultant force acting down the slope. Whenever we have an expression for resultant force, we can equate it to ma. So this is equal to ma. Now let's work out what sine alpha and cos alpha are. So using a right angle triangle, if this is alpha, and we know that tan alpha is three over four, three is the opposite, four is the adjacent from tan alpha is three over four. Use Pythagoras, this will then be five. And we can see from that, that sine alpha will equal to three over five opposite over hypotenuse and cos alpha will equal to four over five adjacent over hypotenuse. We also know that the acceleration is equal to four over five g. We're told that in the question here. So let's put everything in. So r is then equal to mg cos alpha, which is four fifths of mg. This equation becomes mu times r. So r is this, mu times four fifths mg. And then we have plus mg sine alpha. Sine alpha is 3 over 5. And that's equal to ma, where a is 4 over 5g. So that will be 4 over 5 mg, which is just mass times acceleration, where acceleration is this. So the mgs will cancel out. The 5s will cancel out as well. So that whole equation will simplify to 4 mu plus 3 is equal to 4. Again, I've cancelled out the mg's and the 5's. We're left with what we have over here, and then we can take the 3 to the other side, we get 4 mu is equal to 1, divide by 4, we get mu is equal to a quarter, which is our answer to part A. And for part B, the particle comes to rest at a point A on the plane. Determine whether the particle will remain at A, carefully justifying your answer. All right, so the particle is initially moving up the slope, and then we know that the friction will oppose that motion. Friction always opposes motion. 
It then comes to rest, it stops. There's no more upwards motion, so there will no longer be a friction going down the slope. Now it wants to slide back down the slope because of this component of weight that acts down along the slope. And so if it wants to slide back down the slope, friction will try to oppose that desired motion. Friction will then act up the slope. So friction always opposes motion. If something is going forwards, friction will be backwards. And friction also opposes desired motion. So if something wants to go, in this case, down the slope, because this weight force will normally have this object roll down the slope, friction will want to oppose that and therefore act up the slope. So let's draw that on a force diagram. So on the right hand side here is the same force diagram as before with our weight and our normal reaction force. The frictional force will go up the slope. I'll call that F. So this component of weight wants to pull the object down the slope and the friction opposes that. So we are trying to see if the particle will remain in this position. This is position A. Will it remain in this position or will the object slide down the slope? We can figure that out by thinking about how big the frictional force will be, what's the biggest this force can possibly be, and also by thinking about how big this component of weight going down the slope will be. We want to compare the sizes of those two forces. So let's start with the mg sine alpha. So component of weight going down the slope is mg sine alpha. Sine alpha from earlier we saw to be 3 over 5. So sine alpha is 3 over 5. This is then equal to 3 fifths of mg. Again, that's the component of weight going down the slope. We have friction going up the slope. The max frictional force that you can have is mu r. Friction can't get any bigger than that. So let's compare the max frictional force to that downward component of weight. Mu is equal to a quarter. The normal reaction force is the same as before. If we look at our force diagram, the mg cos alpha is acting in this direction. R will oppose that. R will be equal to mg cos alpha. So a quarter times R, which is the same thing as a quarter times mg cos alpha. So there are no changes in the forces perpendicular to the slope, hence why the reaction force is still equal to mg cos alpha. Cos alpha is equal to, scrolling back up, is equal to 4 over 5. Cos alpha is 4 over 5, so times by 4 fifths mg. The 4s cancel, and this is then a fifth of mg. So the maximum frictional force is a fifth of mg. The component of weight going down the slope is 3 fifths mg. That component of weight going down the slope is bigger than the maximum frictional force that can be provided, which is a fifth mg. So if the component of weight going down the slope is bigger than the force going up the slope, the frictional force, therefore there will be a resultant force down the slope, it will accelerate down, it will not remain at rest at point A. Therefore, there's a resultant force down the slope, so it accelerates down the slope. 